Okay, we are live. So, oh, let's do it this way. Three, two, one. Welcome back to Top Dogs. Today we have with us Burn McGovern. Dude, you are like the man on YouTube. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no, for sure. You, you, it's a title well deserved. You and shout out to uh, Dan Parker, who I think run San Diego when it comes to San Diego real estate specific content on YouTube. And you both are doing really, really, really well when it comes to um, getting leads from it. And if you don't want me asking, over the last 12 months, if you can tell me, what was your GCI based off of your uh, YouTube? So over the last 12 months, I wish I had that number right in front of me, but I usually get a, I, the last two to three years, I've gotten 65% of my business from uh, YouTube. So I think... Uh, Last year wasn't as good as the previous year, just because the market well, yeah, no, shifted for sure. a little bit. But I think we did. We had 500 GCI and about 350 or so was from. That is amazing. Yeah. Okay. So that right there is a reason why you're here. Yeah. Because there's obviously people that want to start this platform. They really want to start this lead pillar. And they're crippled by the idea of either the camera, how to get started, um, thinking that there's too many people doing it already. Sure. And um, it sounds like you started this in 2018. Yeah, so I started in 2018 making, I was just kind of doing the digital mayor type approach, which actually okay. was not the right approach to take. So I, I was a big Gary Vee follower. I, I list, watched every single one of his videos. I read all his books. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to work. So I moved to actually, so backtrack a little bit. I moved to San Diego in 2016. So I was in Los Angeles before. So I was oh, a, same here. Yeah, there you go. So I was a real estate agent up there from 2012 to 2016. I we always kind of decided we never wanted to be in Los Angeles forever. So I was like, okay, we're going to move now. We should do it now, it's just because the far longer you're in real estate, it's harder to move. As oh, I'm sure exactly. you're aware. Of. Oh, absolutely. So we just decided that we had our first child. Uh, he was two years old, so we moved down to San Diego. And then I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start making videos. And for two years, I just sat on my thumbs and decided not to make videos. Then one day, I finally uh, my, I asked my videographer first, like, oh, when, when we start making videos, he's like, I'm ready when you are. And eventually, I finally made my first video. We shot three videos in the same day. We, did, we interviewed, like, a local gym, a coffee shop, and my son's preschool. <laughs> okay. And all three of those videos, I think, combined, maybe have a 1,000 views total, like, between the three of them. Up until this day, this is sure. how many years later? Six years later which is crazy. So, and I'm like, okay, this is going to work. I'm like, you know, the slowly, but surely like, just keep doing these. Everyone's going to know me. Everyone's going to call me and sell their house with me. This would be great. Um, I did that for almost two years. I got one client from a video. Uh, after two years. Yeah. After two years. I did, but I was doing coffee shops. I was doing, um, uh, local, anytime a restaurant would open, Naughty Barrel over in uh, Rancho Trinas Gitas, yeah, yeah. Ponce's Mexican place. And I just kept doing these over and people, you know, the, the restaurant super appreciated it. It's not oh, for sure. On, I post on YouTube, on Facebook, and all this other stuff. But I never, I got literally got one deal from it. I went to a bomb bomb. You know, you know what bomb bomb is? Like a CRM. Oh yeah, bomb bomb. Yeah, they absolutely. did a video conference in Denver in I guess it was must have been 2019, pre-pandemic. And I met Karen Carr. Uh, I heard of Karen Carr. It was like a video conference for people that did video. Yeah. And um, so I spoke to her after she she uh, spoke there. And I'm like, I've been doing all these videos. And on like restaurants and stuff, she's like, have you ever tried just doing like talking about where you live, like pros and cons of living in it? And like, no, I'm like, no one's going to watch. That. Nah. And she's like, just try it and see what happens. So I'm like, OK, I went back and uh, like a week later, I shot um, I think I did a neighborhood tour and then I did like a pros and cons video and they all had more views than all my other videos combined. No. Yeah, that's it's funny. <laughs> cause that's uh, no, you're fine. That's basically where I started. and. Um... I'm doing too many things. I need to do, I need to focus more on that. But, uh, you know, it's funny when my coach, I approached my Tom Ferry coach and I said, look, I want to start doing this because I think it beats door knocking and cold calling and all this and that. For you know, sure. If you can actually get in front of the camera and commit to doing it. <laughs> no, you're fine. And it's funny because, because my, my coach is actually an agent in um, Oceanside. So he's who's your coach. Who's your coach? Uh, Brian Elio. Okay. Cool. Yeah. He's with Harcourts. Okay. So shout out to Brian, Coach Brian. Um, he told me to follow you because he's been following you for a while. Okay. Cool. And Dan Parker. And uh, and then the other, um, oh my God. 
Shout out to Bob Tompkins. Dude, I'm sorry I keep forgetting your name. You're the man. <laughs> I never forget you, Bob. Don't worry. But I do not like this whole shaved face situation you got going on. Yeah, right was now. that real? I just saw that the other day. That's real. Really no, he did that. Face? He did that. He did that. I don't know why he did that. You look great, dude. I'm just saying. You look great either way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he told me to follow you guys and basically, obviously not copy and paste, but that's a, it was a start. Find their best sure. videos and then try to make a unique video based off what they're doing and they're being successful with in the neighborhoods that you want to sell. Sure. And it worked. You just got to commit to doing it. I, I realized. Yeah. You know? It's just, honestly, it's consistency is probably the biggest thing. Um, I was do I mean, I was trying to do so many things, different types of videos all the time. And I think I've tr even tried to done too many neighborhoods already. I should just go back and focus on the videos that I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not people. No, no. You want some more water? So I just got this cough that's been lingering. Oh, man, I hate when that happens. Ah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> um, so what was I saying? You were all over the place, different neighborhoods. Yeah, so I was, I'm, I'm still doing too many neighborhoods. I think I need to go back to the basics and go back to what my niche was. Because I, I focus on North County, San Diego, mostly the neighborhoods along the 56th Freeway. Yeah. So it's like Carmel Valley, Rancho Panacitas, Del Cerro, Forest Ranch, Fresh Bernardo, Poway. And now I've tried to do, like, I do Coronado. Like, I don't sell much in Coronado. <laughs> yeah, that's where I met you. You came to my, uh, my listening yeah, Coronado. Yeah, beautiful film. house you listen you had in Coronado, which was fantastic. That was a fun house. I just feel like sometimes I'm confusing my audience. I do sure. too many things. It's funny because I actually looked at that video. You guys, your video offer did a fantastic job. And your partner, uh, Courtney, yep. um, she's, you guys have great chemistry mm -hmm. on the camera together. And, um, yeah, that video, and please don't think it's the wrong way, did not do as good as all of your other videos. I know, do. which I was surprised by because it was such a beautiful video. Oh, you had it laid out great. Like, five, what, is, what do you get for $5 million? I know, in I Coronado? thought, I was thinking this video is going to crush it because we, we haven't done a lot of house tours, honestly. Yeah. So I think that might have confused our audience a, lot, a little bit because we don't do those videos. Yeah. But if I do more of them, I'm curious if it does better. So. No, I mean, I, it was, and it was a great video. I mean, I think, I think that's a different channel. Right. If you start doing and that was that was a question I was talking to you about before we started this podcast was, you know, your channel right now is bringing in buyers. Sure. And you're doing very, very, very well with that. And with what's going on with NAR right now and the lawsuits, um, you know, now that sellers are not going to have to be paying the commission to buyers and buyers might have to be paying their own commissions. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Are you considering? Possibly starting another channel, gearing towards maybe property tours, trying to get sellers, or is, is that is that like crossed your head at all? I have considered creating more channels uh, and be more niche for each one. Sure, like just do one that's just neighborhood tours. Like I, I right now, I have a channel with like thirty different things going on. It so could I have done like a neighborhood one, a just a real <laughs> oh. this cough? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, and just doing like a house tour one. Yeah. Like Jeremy uh, Knight. In he Austin. just started that started one. one. Shout out to Jeremy Knight. That dude's awesome. Yeah. So I think it could be beneficial because I think some people do like my neighborhood tours, but not everybody wants, they want to just have the real estate updates. Right. Right. So I think it would be beneficial. I just don't have enough time in the day to create oh, yeah. multiple channels. No, you're busy. You got a thriving business, man. Yeah. So yeah. So that's, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. So, I mean, I have been able to outsource some of the stuff to make it a little bit easier streamlined. But honestly, the one thing that's the hardest to do is like coming up with ideas and then writing out the ideas. Yeah. Like the what, like real estate updates are great, but you have to like write the whole script out. Oh, yeah. No, totally. It's not as simple. You I've can't tried, go off the cuff with I've it. I've tried <laughs> off the cuff with it, but there's just too many stats, too many things to yeah. talk about. So it's just, it just becomes more challenging in that way. So that, that actually brings me to one of the questions is as far as coming up with a YouTube video idea, do you have a process from here's the idea to the execution and the creation of your thumbnails and everything? Or is it just you one day, that's what I did, just wrote down 100 ideas and just started kind of like starting to knock down those ideas? Yeah, I, I started in the beginning. We did come up with like a whole huge list of ideas. And then I... <coughs> sure. Oh. Then we're gonna stop. It's okay. Uh, and then I will usually come up with the thumbnail first, actually. Which oh, in the, in the past I never did that. I would always just come up with an idea, write out bullet points. When I do the videos with Courtney and my my uh, business partner, she we basically just come up with an outline, and then we just talk about it. If it's one of our talking head videos, that's all we do. Um, or an, even our neighborhood tours, we'll just like, okay, these are the locations we're gonna hit. We'll hit usually five different places, like a food place, a coffee place. 
uh, the most well-known places in the area, like a park or like uh, if you're doing like Del Mar, you'll go down to the beach, obviously. Oh, totally. The most recognizable spots over there. And we'll just talk about them in, in depth, like our experiences with them. What's our favorite beach? What's our favorite coffee shop? We talk about donuts quite a bit. For some yeah, I, I, that's, I got my donut idea from you guys. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not <laughs> even sure how that came about. One day we just like, oh, there was a, we, I think we went to sidecar donuts. Which, I think that's right. I, but I but I'll be honest with you. I did not steal that one from you. I I actually went back. My video anybody did, can do a donut video. It's okay. My video did terrible on the donuts. Well, I did a 26 minute video on. Oh donuts. my god! Really? And it did not do well. So I don't think uh, donuts is. Our did you get free donuts at least? We did not get any. Actually, one place gave us free. Donuts yeah. While we were doing it, I thought that video was actually pretty good. But then when I edited, I edited it together. Yeah. It was 26 minutes long. 26 minutes. I think you can make a video about. That. Donuts for twenty six minutes, but apparently you can't. Oh so. yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Wow. So we, we've I've done a lot of trial and error. Some videos have done some, and honestly, sometimes the video you think was the worst ends up being the best video. Right. So it really just depends um, on the audience, and sometimes the ones or the, the, that aren't the most professional do really well, and people really like and comment on it. So I wish I could say there was like a perfect formula, like yeah. the YouTube formula to make a perfect video, but sometimes it just it just happens. No, no, totally. I, I completely understand. And you've been doing it for years now, so yeah. does this stuff come more natural to you as far as the streamlining of getting of, of the ideas and everything, and then filming and executing? Because I know you just mentioned you do your thumbnails first. That sounds like a, Mr. Beast does the same thing. He talks about that all the time, right? I think he talks about he focuses on thumbnails more than anything else. More than times. anything else. Yeah. Did you get that idea from him, or is that just something that you started doing? I mean, it was definitely part of it from him. I mean, every YouTuber will tell you, it's like, start with the thumbnail. If you can make a good thumbnail, then the topic is... If you can convey what you want in the thumbnail for what the video is about, the video will do much better. Got it. I need to focus more on my Because thumbnails. I, honestly, when I first started, I would barely pay attention. Sometimes I would just do a screen grab from the video, and then make it up my thumbnail. So, okay. Uh, but now I'm much more... I've been actually using AI a lot more for uh, thumbnails recently. How is that working out? I'm still playing with it. Yeah, and yeah, I'm trying to find the right program to work for it. So I'm just, I just play with ChatGPT today to make thumbnails. You basically just type it into it. It has the paid version. Um, like the 4.0? The, yeah, whatever the newest one yeah, is, yeah. I guess. And then you can just type in what you want it to look like. Like, I want to have, I did one with a, I was doing like a prediction video of the uh, San Diego housing market. Okay. So give me the San Diego skyline with a crystal ball and someone's hand holding it out over the skyline. And it'll look pretty, pretty badass. Really? Actually. Yeah. So okay, I'm still working out. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna use it every time, but I'm gonna try to see if I can get my point across through it and see if they can make a cool uh, thumbnail. Have you seen Ray Ellen's thumbnails? He uses AI. What he uses? AI, I think he uses AI for all of his thumbnails now. Oh, does he really? Yeah, it's really. I know Dan Parker's doing. That's kind oh, of, is that what he's he doing? Gave me the idea for it. We oh just wow! Talked about it on our last Ash podcast. So. I missed that. I signed up for it. I'm sorry, I didn't make it. Yeah, don't worry. You can watch the <laughs> replay. And just know you'll you'll go down the route. Like I get sucked into these things all the time. So I'm like. Huh. Whenever you find something cool to do. Yeah. Like right before this podcast, I was playing with AI thumbnails all day long. Oh, so. were you? Yeah, it was funny because I remember um, uh, at Tom Ferry Summit, Ray Allen was, they, they used one of the examples. I mean, he went so into detail, though. He he went into all the stats on the camera, the lens that was being I know, used, the exposure, that. and then he punched it into the video uh, AI, and I, I just couldn't believe what it came and out this with. This is just like the start of it, so it's only oh, going to get know. better. So I know. It's until, the, until the robots take over. Well, we'll see when that happens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, now I'm visualizing. I, know, I was going to war I... with robots. <laughs> it's happening. Terminator Five. What are we on? Sure. So uh, I know in the beginning you said you uh, came up with a big list, kind of like I did. Yep. And um, as of right now, I'm assuming that list is pretty much done. Yeah. So when you are sitting down, and I, Courtney doesn't do it with you all the time. It's Not just every, every once time. in a while. I would right? say half the time she does. Probably. Okay. So when you're sitting down um, and you're figuring out what you want to do, are you planning for the next month, next quarter, the next year? Like, what is your, so, what are you doing? I'm trying to get bet ahead of it. Okay. For a while, I was always like, okay, I need the next video out, next video out, and it's like every week I was trying to catch yeah. up. Yeah. Right now I'm five videos ahead, which is like the first time I've ever been five videos ahead. So. You have five uh, videos done. Five videos done, ready. Wow, to go. that's so, awesome. Actually, just shot. There's two getting edited right now. There are other three. Done, so, and are you? So you're not. I mean, at your level, you're not editing those anymore. I right? actually really enjoy editing. You I, do. I think I'm like the one real estate agent that actually like edit their videos. Um, but I don't edit. I probably edit one every five. One every five. <laughs> um, but in the beginning, I edited every single one. So your videographer that I met at my Coronado listing, does she also the? Does she edit the videos as well? 
Uh, oh, that was Lydia. Lydia's not our editor. She was just she, our admin. She was yeah. your admin. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought so she was. We your actually admin. we actually just filming with a GoPro that time. I remember that. Yeah. So, um, but no, I have an ad. I have a videographer that I use on probably half the shoots. Okay. Like the neighborhood tours mostly. With the sit down ones, uh, we obviously just film ourselves, and then yeah. we vlog. Like the one we did at your house, we just vlog. So honestly, sometimes the vlog ones are. I find them to be more personal a little bit. So you get to show your personality a little bit more when you know you're getting filmed by somebody else. I feel like you sometimes change. I don't know. I guess that kind of makes sense. Actually. <laughs> you got me coughing. Now. <laughs> Story of my life right now. Um, no, that's interesting. And that video you did at the Coronado house was beautiful too. Right? Yeah. And, and it was, and yeah. that was on a GoPro. It was on a GoPro. And honestly, the, the light was perfect that day. So yeah, it was a lucky day. GoPros were can work really well for blogging, especially on a video. Yeah, I know Austin Robertson. He's uh, shout out to Austin. He's in Seattle. Seattle, Tacoma, Seattle. Yeah, yeah, he has the real YouTuber yeah. page. He um, only uses a uh, he has a GoPro with uh, like the media kit attached to it. Yeah, and that's, that's basically all he uses. Actually, I use a DJI Osmo uh, Action now, so I use it because they. Well, how do you like that one compared? My microphones hook up better to it than I use the DJI mics. Have you ever used those? Uh, so. What did that say? It just said that okay, it's still, it must be recording. I think we're oh. good. Okay, cool. Uh, so you're using the DJI Osmo. Yeah. Oh, is that the one with the flip screen, the new one? Uh, it doesn't, mine doesn't have a, oh, that's the pocket. Like, that's the pocket. Uh, yeah, Got this it. one looks exactly like a GoPro, but my mics just plug right into them rather than having to run a cord to it. Okay. Well, uh, weird thing with the GoPro, my cord kept popping out while I was recording on there. And it was, I have no idea. Maybe wow. it was just a bad cord. And I'll literally buy any camera equipment that comes out so oh you'll buy any i even have the uh insta 360 uh one that the camera pops out of the thing you can leave, leave it on here and like uh stick it to your car and then it'll you haven't seen this one no i haven't seen that one no don't buy it I'm, don't I, buy it got I, it well it, it was i bought it i have not used it so uh, yeah see i just bought the new not the new i got the sony uh, alpha 6400 oh, okay that's basically what i'm using for everything now but i i've noticed DJI is just great. I mean, everybody's All using, and I mean, everything they have is amazing. And obviously, um, the we just we just you just mentioned this. The uh, the GoPros are still so. Oh, the fantastic. GoPros. The, the quality of the on a GoPro is. I mean, no one's gonna really. No one really cares about the quality. I mean, they're all good quality. Of so course, no one's really gonna be known unless you're like a a film, you know, uh, director of photography. Yeah, tearing like up the video instead of getting the value out of it. <laughs> exactly. So. The most important thing is the audio. So if you have bad audio, no one's going to watch it. That's true. But if you have good, and our, our phones, uh, GoPros, DJIs, a DSLR, as long as it's decent quality and it's not super dark, that's where it makes a difference. I think if you have like a DSLR or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. But like GoPro can take incredible footage. Oh my God, they're amazing. Um, and the drone, I have drones too. We use drones. See, that's the thing. That's on my. That's next on my list. Is I need to. I need to pick up a drone. They're very inexpensive too. Yeah, days. yeah, and I just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. But um, yeah, it's like you can get a like four hundred bucks and get you, you get one of the TJ Mini ones that are yeah the Mini that you two don't need a license for apparently. Well, don't quote me on that. But okay, it's, uh, <laughs> if it's under two hundred fifty grand, which I think the Mini is, um, you supposedly don't have a license for. unless you're using it for commercial use, right? Sure. If you're yes. getting paid, I guess you have to go. Yeah, don't listen to me about drones. <laughs> <laughs> Do your own due diligence. Consult YouTube somewhere else. <laughs> No, I need I need to jump on that, and uh, you know it's just it's so sad. It's so it, whenever something new comes, like that. You look at my shelf there. I just I just have all that crap that I I just. If you need more equipment, let me know. Just come to my office. You can <laughs> borrow whatever you want. Oh, well, you're close by. So yeah, I have nice. a Sony. I have a, a Canon R6, I think. And then oh, really? Multiple lenses that I only use one lens, so I'm not even sure why I bought it. So. Well, I need to buy another camera so I can have one here on you and yeah. one on me. I this. did a, one of my highest performing videos was a tour of Legoland with my kid. Oh, I did uh, watch that video. There. And that one I did, did on a GoPro. Yeah. It yeah. like 50,000 views. So. Wow. See, and, and that's one thing I'm like trying to uh, tell, convey to people, especially here. Like we've had the conversation with um, the gentleman outside before we came in here. You just got to start filming. You do. And that's why when someone's trying to have a conversation with you about YouTube, like, like a two minute conversation, I'm like it's, this is like a, a days day. long conversation. Oh yeah, you can have on it, so. oh yeah. And, and and but at the end of the day, I just I just say just just freaking do it. Just start making one video. It took like I said, it took me two years to make one video, but yeah. once I did it, then I got I'm like a, a video addict now. Yeah, all you I are. want to do is make videos yeah. all the time. So 
And if you're not making videos, you're on webinars about making videos. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, I'm writing a script for my next video. Exactly. Just all I'm doing is trying to find the next video to make. Yeah, while managing all of your clients and your listings. Yeah, and I know. The, the, my job gets in the way of my video making. Yeah, I think the next step for you is probably going to be hiring a lot more agents and people so you can just keep creating content and they're handling everything. Yeah, honestly, if I could just make videos all day long, just keep clients keep coming, that would be perfect. That'd world, be the but, dream, right? Yeah, then I'll take all the $4 million clients. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. About that. But uh, I would like to try to make more uh, seller-focused videos too. Yeah. But again, that might have to be a separate channel because it's not my target audience right now exactly no and um but you do a, such a good job though with bringing those buyers in i mean your content is just fantastic and if you're a realtor watching this and you want to explore off the 56 on youtube go in incognito mode take a look at the videos <laughs> if you're going to start a video finish the video please um some people are very strict about that yeah i'm always good about that if i want to watch them oh, yeah. even if i'm not watching it when I posted my very first video on break room on, on workplace, mm -hmm. Jeremy Knight hit me up like five minutes later saying, you're destroying your algorithm. He is correct. He is correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he sent me a bunch of videos to watch. He's like, stop doing this. I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Cause I actually, me, Dan, Jeremy, and Ken Pozak all started around the same time. Ken Pozak Obviously awesome. some have had more success than others, but <laughs> like well, Ken and Jeremy. Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Ken, uh, Ken, yeah, he's a beast. With uh, he's he's still he's in Florida, right? Uh, he's in Florida. Yeah, he re he relocated like the same time I did. From he he went from Detroit to uh, Orlando. Okay, uh, so that's interesting. He's had a few more views than I have, unfortunately. A few. So. <laughs> he's he's become very popular. Uh, it's funny in his videos, you'll see people stopping him. Yeah, and saying how much they love him because they're watching his videos. He's like a local celebrity, which is amazing. Yeah, and uh, it's really funny that you brought that up. So Ken Pozak, you. And um, Austin Robertson's in Tacoma. Sure, yeah. In Tacoma, you guys all relocated and started making videos. Where was Austin before? He was in a small town. And correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I think it was uh, somewhere Kentucky in Kentucky or okay. something gotcha. like yeah. that. Really small town. And then he moved to Seattle, which was totally different. So he just started basically building content out about his, his experience of looking for a home. Yeah, I've been doing really well. For oh, him, he's right? doing great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's doing great. Um, and um, and then obviously Dan Parker is killing it too. Sure, yeah. You know, so you guys are an inspiration to the creator community in real estate, which is so funny because I feel like the creator community. I know it's been around for a while, but I feel like it's being. I feel like it's blowing up right now. I mean, we got, kind of got in it at an earlier time. I mean, which you guys did, yeah. Crazy, at least for YouTube. Like Instagram, I, I actually really do not enjoy doing short form video. <laughs> and my coach tries to get me to do it all the time. And I'm like, <laughs> I, it doesn't bring me clients. Why do I want to do it? I'm like, you know, I'll post pictures of my kids and that sort of thing. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just enjoy short form video a lot more. I think people get to know you like you trust you a lot more on long form video. Um, You're delivering so much yeah. more value. And I'm actually, honestly, a little bit of an introvert in general like it might i do video because i can talk to one person even though i'm talking to like a lot of people so like if you put me in like a huge room i usually don't do very well see i think that's fascinating so there's so many introverts uh that i've spoken to in real estate that are having a hard time because they're becoming secret agents because well, they're yeah, introverted sure. right and if you can get comfortable with just the camera it's just one person you're talking to exactly yeah. and, you're, and you're focusing on talking to one person you can create this content that can reach thousands exactly that's that's amazing. That's why I do so well with YouTube because I can talk to one person very easily. Like I can talk to you all yeah. day long. One yeah, on yeah. One, but if there's like, you put me on front of stage, I'd probably <laughs> buckle under the headlights. I haven't seen you on stage yet, but if you keep going the way you're going, I'm assuming you're going to be on stage quite. Are you with, are you in the Tom Ferry network? I'm Tom Ferry. Yeah. 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 Same here. Okay. So I, I have a feeling you're going to be on stage probably pretty soon. If you keep, I don't, I'm just saying, to. man, I like to go under the radar. <laughs> <laughs> Except for buyers and sellers, feel free to reach out. Oh yeah, there you go, <laughs> off the fifty six. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no man, I'm just saying, I, you guys are, you guys are spearheading quite a bit. I think, especially in space, and it's really funny that I feel like real. This is not. I'm not trying to pitch real here, but it is so. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? creator friendly yeah and inclusive too and very inclusive yeah. and i feel like the i feel like they're really not pushing us but 
a lot of attention is on creating content and really what is it Sharon just said that the best business model is becoming is, is fame sure yeah i think it's what he's it was something along those lines so get your face out there put content out there keep pushing and pushing and you guys have really paved the way for people like myself and other people that are getting into the space right now that have so many questions yeah and i'm always happy to talk to people whenever they reach out too oh i told people to call yeah. you yeah yeah yeah. i've told people to call you and uh because i don't have all the answers i, I mean i'm new at neither this. do i i'm still i mean i learned yeah but every week. you have so much success and you've gone through you, you've had hard times and good times with it you've learned so much you know what i mean and and you're not even afraid the fact that you're here and you're talking about it too is great because I feel like a lot of people like to keep what they're being successful at kind of to themselves because they're afraid of losing deals. Sure. Yeah. But again, I don't think you would be with real if you kind of had that mentality. No. And uh, I think one of the big reasons I joined, not to do the whole I know, thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was at a couple different brokerages before I got here and I was always looking for people that wanted to talk like video with me. And like I was at uh, Compass before. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say Yeah, same here. I was there. I was, yeah. I was there too. And I was like, okay, is there anybody here who wants to do video? And people were like, oh, we make listing videos, but it wasn't like making video video. Right. So, and they go, we're going to make a studio in the office so we can, anybody can use it. I'm like, okay, right. Never happened. So I'm just like, okay, I guess I'll do it myself. So I just, just I joined Real because all the other people that did video that were smarter than me doing video is where I wanted to be around. I never wanted to be the smartest, not the smartest guy around, but at least as far as video goes. Sure. I wanted to keep getting better and learn. Yeah, no, 100%. That's. One of the reasons why I started this podcast too, you know, the main reason was it's really hard out there to be a realtor right now. A little bit. I mean, what we're at like over a hundred thousand dropped this year already, and it's not even over. And I'm trying to bring the biggest people in the room who are willing to share and open the book to at least help one person an episode, at least sure. one person to like improve their revenue. But also, the second reason is is because I've been in this business for nine years. And I've had really great years, really bad years. But at the end of the day, I'm learning something every single day. Yeah. And having people like you in the room is, first of all, I, I'm honored that you're giving me your time. So I really appreciate oh, that. Time. And I'm learning so much. Yeah, just let me film some of your other $5 million houses. and we'll, we'll I'll that, let right? you know. I'll let you know. Yeah, <laughs> dude, for sure. For sure. We'll have like a three. I think I should have like a 3.8 coming up hopefully okay. very soon. In Coronado? Or somewhere yeah, else. it's in okay. Coronado. So I don't know if you want to do that again. I but I think if I did more of a, like I said, I might have to create another channel to do more house tour exclusive, but we'll see. Well, this is what we'll do next time. I'll bring you on the boat <laughs> and then you can launch your drone and get some cool shots on the boat. That would be awesome. Too. For sure. So, um, but I'll let you know when that happens. Yeah, for sure. Fingers crossed. So. But, um, but yeah, so I mean, another, if you were to go back to 2018, yeah. okay. And you were going to give yourself three pieces of advice to, I don't want to say skyrocket to your first five to 10 leads from YouTube, but to get you closer to them. Sure. What would you tell yourself? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, one is I would probably have stockpiled, like I would have probably batched, uh, maybe eight to 10 videos ahead of time because one of the big problems with I had at least early, I still have a problem is you post a video, you have to have the next video ready to go. Post a video and the next video ready to go. So right. just try to have eight videos already done before you even start posting your videos. Oh, wow. Okay. Just because then you're going to don't have to play catch up all the time and then just be consistent. Try to get shoot one, just do one video a week and then you're always ahead of the game. Even like right now I said I'm five, ahead of, five videos ahead. Yeah. It took me five years to get to that point to do it. So, okay. So, you'd start so that would be a big one. Uh, I would say, um, this is a stupid one, but be yourself. I think when you try not to be somebody else or just try to be so polished or so professional, um, you kind of take away your, your personality a little bit. So especially when we were filming during the pandemic, I think we were all a little loopy a little bit. So I think <laughs> it actually helped us that we, you know, we weren't, you weren't really trying to impress anybody. We're just trying to give out information. This is before we were getting leads, and then the leads started funneling in. I'm like, oh, maybe we should just double down on what we already are doing. Because sometimes I'll watch people uh, they'll make a beautiful video that looks great, everything about them, but there's like zero personality there. So we all, everyone has a personality in some sure. way. Um, so just try not try to be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. That was a big one. I think that's helped our channel survive quite a bit. Um, and then the third one would be. <laughs> don't worry about the equipment. I mean, this is the one we probably talk about too much. As you, I've already told you, I have every yeah. piece of equipment under the sun. <laughs> I probably use three pieces total. My drone, my microphone, and my DJI. 
Yep. Yeah, you know, it's funny because for my YouTube um, channel, I typically just use my phone because mm-hmm. um, I'm only filming at what maybe eight minutes at a time sure. for me personally. Um, where this is an hour plus, so you sh- that's why I got the equipment because you know it sure. would heat up and stuff. But you're right; you don't need anything. But I mean, sure, the sound's not the greatest on an iPhone. I don't know if you agree with that, but well, that's why I get the mic. You can plug yeah. my DJI's into your phone. Yeah, so. Just get a mic, and I think you'd be pretty much solid for at least talking head videos sure. and property tours. You can even—I mean, I have the uh, I have the DJI uh, gimbal, the Osmo. Oh, what is that? The OM three yeah, or whatever, sure, so I have yeah. that, so I'll use that as well. That's really all you need, though. You really do, and I, I like I said, I have too much of the equipment, but really to get started, you need like one thing. Exactly, so. you can you can you can have fun with it later. The only reason I don't use my phone is because you can't take out the memory card and put it into. A place, I know, so. yeah, it takes forever. To so that's why and... DJI plug a little mini SD and then take it out and pop it. Myself. Yeah, no, it's 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 a game changer for sure. But you don't need that right now if you're just starting. Out. Yes, for sure. And everyone always says that. And I always think it's annoying to say that. But I know. I but mean, it's so just, true. It has to be. It has to be said. Well, it becomes an excuse. Yes. It becomes a very big excuse. Like, oh, I don't have the right equipment, so I can't do it. Yeah, it's like not the guy gonna... we met outside there is probably not doing it because he's like, oh, what, what equipment do I need? He's like, oh, I need to buy a green screen. I need. I don't know like, how. No, no, no you don't. No, you need, a, you need a wall. <laughs> they don't even need a wall. So <laughs> do it outside. And that's literally what we were telling him about. Them. Exactly. Just, just start filming. Yeah. I mean, sure. let, let your, let your stuff just be crap and let it get better. It's funny. If my wife told me just fix one thing every video. Yeah. She, and she's huge with Gary Vee. So she's like, gosh, she's, just, she's like, just one thing every video. That's what I try to do. Like even I, I, I'm more into analytics now too, which sometimes I think can hurt sometimes because I, there's certain videos will do well, like long term. They okay. won't shoot off the bat. They won't get like 500 views first day, but they'll, probably end up with the most views after so Interesting. like my neighborhood tours they don't they do well like over a year period they'll probably end up with five thousand views by the end of the year okay but like my market update videos will have two thousand views after two weeks to so then die off interesting so, so so tell me more about that so i mean that makes sense that you know the market updates are specific well, for yeah, like a that couple frame. weeks right. yeah and then your other videos is is there a way that you plan for that with certain videos? Or well, is I that... just, I, now I just mentally know, like, okay, it's a neighborhood tour. Probably not going to shoot off the shelves. Got and it. Then, but then I'll look at it. I'll usually go by six months rather than, like, two weeks. Got it. So then I'm going to look in six weeks, six months to see how well it's done. And usually it's done pretty well. Okay. No, I, I, that, that's, that makes sense. That's, there's me. Evergreen and there's Timely. I think those are kind of the two, two options that I totally go Totally so. agree. Totally yeah. agree with that. And there's another... Um... People think that the market is saturated mm-hmm. with YouTubers talking about, like, for example, we have, if I was to look at all the YouTubers in San Diego, there's a lot there that a lot. are doing good, still quite a bit, but not to like your guys' level. And, you know, that was something that scared me at first. I'm like, why am I going to start doing this when there's so many people involved in sure. it? And my coach basically had to tell me, and I'm sure you agree with this, that not everybody that likes you is going to like me. No. Definitely and not, not everybody that likes me is going to like you. Yeah. Like, if we're not stealing clients from each other. For sure. I mean, we have different personalities. Like, I find, so my avatar, I could call it. Yeah, yeah. Is 100%. like 35 to 55-year-old couples, probably with kids. Okay. <clears throat> and they probably want to live in North County somewhere. Right. Um, so if you're living, you know, a single guy living, wanting to live downtown, they're probably not calling me. So. Uh, they're calling someone that does a lot of downtown stuff or, right. you know, or, uh, what, what area are you focusing on? A so one? I was focusing a lot on Carmel Valley Okay. and now I'm just focusing on San Diego. Okay. Um, really? I mean, I don't, I mean, I have family in Encinitas, so I might do a little here and there in Encinitas, but sure. I'm honestly going to what I'm interested in yep. and then trying to make that video you know consumer based basically yeah i try to show up i'm trying to show up on like any search term for san diego in general but i might have gone too wide sometimes i've actually come shrunk it back down and going back to more basics like for my best performing video was pros and cons of living in san diego pretty general um that one almost has a hundred thousand views i think so i just Dude, re- awesome. i just redid another one of it uh, i hadn't done one in four years i think about doing it and now that one's got like six thousand views after like two weeks wow which is a pretty good for that's for great this, for this time so I'm kind of going back to the basics a little bit and not try. I was doing like hotel tours and doing all these other stuff too. So I think I was confusing my algorithm a little bit. Oh, more going to the tourist community. I'm like, kind that, of. I mean, that could be another channel again. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to do like a, like places to stay in San Diego, yeah. but I feel like 
I was getting away from what my channel was about, so I'm trying to do less of that stuff. I stayed at the, uh, slept at the zoo, uh, the, the safari park thing, do that which is actually kids. super fun. You should totally do that. I can't wait. But I, again, I think that might be confusing my audience a little bit because that's more like after you're living here, mine's more of a relocation channel, which is like, oh, that'll be cool to do once we live there, but it's not helping me move there. So right. No, totally. I completely understand. So I've, I think I've spread myself a little bit too thin. So now I'm trying to refocus. And you're not panicking like I feel like a lot of people would. You're just going back to the basics. You're yeah. going to what was performing. Yes. What you, and, and you're just. Some people think, oh, my God, I just totally screwed the entire algorithm. Now I have to start from scratch. You can retrain the algorithm apparently pretty quickly. From there you I've go. Understood. So I've been just like, okay, let's go back. Let's relook at it and see what's working, what wasn't working. Yeah. And then go back to it. Yeah, it's funny. I was talking to somebody. Or did I read this? I don't remember. But somebody said, don't worry too much about ruining your algorithm unless you put like a cat playing a piano video up there that gets like 10 million views at that point you're done yes but start a new channel start a new channel (laughs) but but if it's not that then you can retrain your algorithm exactly so i think that was uh my my subscriber count was going down view counts now i've kind of went back and now it's gone back up to where it was got it got it do you want some more water oh no are you sure yeah okay um no and you know I don't know. I think people, like I was saying earlier, are just thinking way too hard. Yes. I think so sometimes... It's the analysis more, paralysis. For sure. And I think you... Like I, I'm guilty of this, too. I try to do too much about... Because, you know, you've done so many videos. you like, what else can I do to like get get new audience? Yeah. But sometimes niching down smaller can actually help your channel grow 10 times more. Well, I agree with that. And that's the same with anything in life, too. I mean, there's people that have large teams that start, you know starting to see they're losing sure, revenue yeah. and they'll cut out 30 percent of their team yep. and they realize their revenue is skyrocketing because of it so that makes a lot of sense yeah for sure so and i think some um like p- people think you can make money off of you it's like our goal is not to make money off of youtube but our goal is to get clients from it yeah you're not looking to monetize so people are like oh how much money are you making off youtube i'm like <laughs> i got i got 100 bucks last month pretty sweet <laughs> So you're not going to make a ton of money on these types of right. channels uh, unless you go national. So I know some people that have national channels like uh, Christina Smallhorn or Malcolm Lawson. That's those type of guys that do national news real estate or they have like a certain niche like affordable housing throughout the country. Then you could actually make money. But if you're trying to do a local channel about San Diego or wherever you're living, you're probably not going to make a ton of money. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I, I think Bob Thompson's making some money off monetization, but he's covering... He's, the, the he's got the whole state. state. If I did the whole state of California, you would be able to oh, make much man, more. For sure. Which I, I thought about, but, yeah. you know. Well, that's a big, uh, talk about a commitment. You're going to have to start flying places. Well, I wouldn't mind. I like to travel. So. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, hey, maybe it's another channel to consider. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> I actually do some California-based uh, content, too. Like, I'll, we're doing a, we just did a video, North, North, North Cal versus SoCal. And I think that video will do well. Because I did a video, East, um, East Coast versus West Coast, and that video still performs well. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. And um I wanted to ask you about um oh, I just had this. I'm look for the spike so I can cut that out right now so I can think. Um oh, this is such a great question and I totally forgot what it was. Was it on the list originally? No. No, no it was just that it's based off of what you just talked about. Oh. So this is a question I wanted to add to it. California. We basically cut all we got all the questions. Yeah, okay, cool. Um this was uh So you went over the three things uh that you would tell yourself in 2018 sure. to help your business grow. And what would and I think you kind of covered what you would tell a brand new person that wanted to shoot YouTube. And that's sure. basically just film, right? Yes. Okay. Be consistent. Film every week. Get a video. I and we didn't talk about this short YouTube shorts. Um, oh no! I was actually I meant to put those on the list. Can okay. you just go on a tangent about that? I'm curious what you think about YouTube shorts. Again, I told you earlier I don't like short form content. Yeah, yeah. It's just like not my bread and butter. I can't do it well. Maybe that's my problem. I just can't do it well. Okay. Um, I just started doing YouTube shorts like a month and a half ago. I probably put out maybe I don't know ten or fifteen of them. And none of them have got, I think I had two videos over a thousand views, which is pretty good for short form, I guess. But it just, I don't think it's not gaining me subscribers, it's not really gaining me tons of views. I just haven't found, I think I just haven't found the right voice for my shorts. Yet. No, I, I understand that. I'm putting shorts out for, well, the podcast sure. on the YouTube channel and maybe like a couple hundred yeah. people will like look at it. I don't think I'm getting any subscribers from it. 
but are you are you posting those shorts as kind of teasers to the long form videos? So you some have? of them. Are. So I, I tried to this new thing. I did a new construction tour. I went to uh, four or five different new construction places. Okay. And then each one of those stops was I turned it into a short too. So I have one long form video, and then I did four or four stops along the way. So each one was sixty seconds. So okay. I could just I could chop it up, and then I could say if you want to watch the full video, go to the long form video. And I thought that was going to work really well. It hasn't worked well yet. But <laughs> well, that's basically what I was told to do as well. I think that's what everybody's hoping you can yeah. use shorts with because you you know you, you reach that other audience exactly. Yeah. But I, I haven't had any success doing that. No, yet. I know uh, Trey Serrano is having good success. Oh, really? In um, is he San Antonio? San he's San Antonio. Antonio. Yeah, and he's been doing that. He almost almost all of his videos he makes like uh, with uh, YouTube Shorts in mind, so he can cut them up and then get people to his long form. So. Uh, maybe I'm just not doing it right yet. So mm, I, I don't think I'm doing it right either. Yeah. So we'll have to call. He's with Calvary, right? That's his like team. Yeah, yeah, he's real, but he's yeah, yeah. Calvary. Yeah. I love that dude. He's yeah, hilarious. he's a good dude. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um. Okay. So as far as so we talked a little bit about. Uh, damn, I covered everything already. That sucks. You're so good to talk to. Well, I, I'm sorry. I, I should have had I twenty questions talk, if I wasn't coughing the entire time. This would have been a lot easier. <laughs> Well, no, I'm just saying I got through all my questions within like within 41 minutes. Okay. It's amazing. I like to get these things done quickly. Yeah, okay. no kidding. Well, you're a busy guy, but I mean, <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, can you can you give us, um, if you were talking to somebody on your team, sure. say somebody joined your team off the 56 and they wanted to start doing YouTube. Sure. And, you know, they're working directly with you, so they're going to have great access. But if you were going to give them homework over the next 10 days, what would that homework be? To, I mean, I know we said just start filming, but if you were going to give them homework, what would you tell them to do over the next 10 days? I would just start outlining videos that you want okay. to make about. like, or, And if you're going to do like a market update one, then write the script out for it. Because I, I honestly, writing is like my least favorite fun part about this entire thing. So if I had someone just write my videos for me, it would be so much better. But I think if you had... Uh, had them all written out or the bullet points ready to go it's so much easier to film it too because sometimes people will go let's try to wing it and see how it goes we tried to wing it and it's like awful. So, I, I, I tried that too it doesn't work so i think if you can come up with the ideas and like have a real plan and then maybe even start making the thumbnails for those videos then you'll have a much easier process because if you make the thumbnails like okay what is this vi- thumbnail telling me about this video can you tell what the video is about just by that thumbnail which is well, I don't. Right. I don't think anybody really. I don't. I mean, a lot of people have been doing this for a while. Think about that all the time. But you don't. Just try to connect the two because you might have the best video in the world, but if your thumbnail sucks, no one's going to watch. It. Okay, so you need to do a lot of practice with making yes, good thumbnails for sure. Especially, and, there, I mean, there is a lot. Like you said there's a lot more competition now, so you have to stand out. And I think in the beginning, it is important to be like consistent every single week. But I think as you get do this more often, I think if you say you're 100 videos in. Just trying to make the best video about your topic. Like if you're trying to do a video about Carmel Valley, Carmel Valley just do your best video you can possibly make about Carmel Valley. Because then it's going to be very hard to top it. I think originally I was like, I'm all about quantity. Just get as many videos out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Which I still don't think it has to be perfect. But as more people get into the space, it's probably more important to be better than the yeah. other videos. So. Differentiate yourself from them more. Because obviously the most important thing is value. Sure, yeah. Right? Um, and consistency. And um, you were, so you said that, okay, they would, they would practice. On, and this is another thing you mentioned that I want to bring up. So you're creating these thumbnails. Find peers. Find people that are better than you and, you know, send them a DM or send them a picture like, hey, this is what my video is about. And this is the thumbnail that I've created to for that video. Can you give me some pointers? Sure, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot of time. And anybody, not anybody, but most people that are willing to help are going to spend some time with you. For sure. I have a, a little mini mastermind text group with uh, four other agents throughout the country. One's in like Virginia Beach, one's in like Atlanta. So we just, we just we'll send our thumbnails like, which one do you guys choose? They'll say, hey, <laughs> top or bottom. And then they'll just let us know. And we're like, okay, that's really or cool. a video did really well. I'm like, hey, guys, I did a video on this topic. You guys can probably use it in your town. I'm like, oh, great. We'll steal that. Or we'll steal that thumbnail or whatever. So we're all about trying to share ideas with each other. Let's build a community. I mean, of like-minded people. That's amazing. And I, you talk about Dan Parker. Dan, when I started doing YouTube, it was like only me doing videos on it, except for Dan Parker. I'm like, I, didn't, I never met Dan Parker. I didn't know who he was. So I, I messaged him one day. He's like, hey, hey, uh, Dan, this is Burn. He's like, oh, I know who you are. He's like, yeah, hey, do you want to meet for lunch? And he's like, uh, sure. And then he's like, 
I met him. I was like, oh, I just wanted to talk YouTube. I was like, oh, I thought you were going to tell me not to make videos anymore. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, he was the only other person that was doing this. So I wanted someone to talk to. So that's how me and Dan became friends. Right. So. I got. I have to get Dan on this show. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, you guys are the two biggest ones in San Diego. I mean, you really are. And you guys have a wealth of knowledge that, you know, you're willing to spread. And I think... Are you on the real YouTubers page? Yes. Okay. I know. So I, I don't. I don't. I don't know if I've seen you contribute a lot. I haven't. To that. Well, I I don't use that one as much. I'm on the real or no the the YouTube mastermind on uh, Facebook, the one with Christina and Malcolm run. Oh, I have to check. I'm that on out. that one a lot. But I will out. try to jump into more on the real one. More often, so. Yeah, it's it's um, I used to have so much to give. Yeah. You really, really do, and. I honestly think it's so it's becoming more and more important to get on some type sure of you know content platform yeah. so, some type it, it just every single day I feel like we're getting closer and closer and closer because look like let's let's face it you guys have your future set up I mean as long I as you keep so. doing what you yeah. no, come on <laughs> you you've already, you told us again how much you make and it's going to it's going to keep increasing because you guys are still putting content out there and the content you're putting out there is still getting views. Oh, I was talking to Austin about this and he says, you know, I look at it as I think it's really important to make sure you prospect for a certain amount of hours a day. Sure. So what he does is he goes into his view, his time, his time watched on his YouTube channel. He goes, look, look, <laughs> last week I prospected for 435 hours. Top that. Top that. Yeah. With any other form of pro you can't, it's literally impossible. You can't. So, I mean, if you're talking about wanting to manage your time well and wanting to do a lot of prospecting, I mean, that's a really great way to look at it. That sure. is, that's solid prospecting. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention, because you mentioned this earlier about the NAR lawsuits. And that yeah. Sort of thing, like yeah. Buyers, agents, commissions go away or they have to end up paying for themselves. Um, I heard someone say, like, uh, like I, I buy Zillow leads and it's hard enough for those people to get to work with me. If they're, if they're working for free, not free, we're not going to say free. Well, but yeah, for sure. They weren't paying for it out of their pocket. Um, but I, with YouTube, it's the client, whenever you get a client from YouTube, they're like, they're the best clients in the world because they already know you, like you, and trust you. So if the Zillow leads dries up or whatever it is, I still think people will be willing to pay. If, say, we have, they have to pay for their own agency, then the YouTube leads will probably still do it. That's, what I, that's, that's a what I really good so idea. I, I just think in Zillow leads, it's very hard to get people to even work for free, let alone, you know. If the other way around. No, so. you're totally right. Because the people that reach out to me, literally, it's totally night and day. Yeah. You know, have you even given a lead and someone's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to connect you with Jared. He's great. He's amazing. You still have to sell them. You yes. still have to, even though you have that third party. Yes. And then if someone spent an hour or more on YouTube watching you, they've seen your quirkiness, your personality, the value you give, how much you care. I mean, you've built this rapport with them. They know what I like to drink, like to eat. Like exactly. I've had people bring me donuts. I've had people bring me beer. I've had people bring me. Uh, someone made me a doll of my, uh, like a, a bobblehead of of my face. See, that's that's amazing. I actually had clients stay at my house on Halloween one time because they didn't. Play <laughs> Did you really? Like I, I kind of just said it like passing. Didn't think they'd take me up on it. It's like, hey, I have an extra room. If you guys need a place to stay. They stayed with me on Halloween. Dude, that's amazing. So like, so. and and that was all built off of making content on yeah. youtube yeah they're not staying at anybody's zillow lead uh, no <laughs> no and they're reaching out to you they're calling you they're texting you they're commenting saying i mean i saw one on dan parker's and i thought this was so brilliant dan parker did a video where it was uh now is may not be the best time to buy a home sure i mean let's be real it's for a lot of people it's very hard and he started talking about the differences between rent. And usually when we do those videos or those, those conversations, it's always like, no, you want to buy. You should like, still buy. Yeah. 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 And then this one, he was like, no, like maybe it's best for you to rent. Yes. And I went through his comments and there were like five. Uh, was that that one? I think there's about five people that are saying, I love your honesty. I'm moving to San Diego next year. I'm totally going to give you a call. And I was just like, oh, my God, it's, it's, it's just proof. You know, be yourself, be honest, provide value. Sure. Even if you're talking about renting, that guy even comes here in a year and rents, he's going to buy sooner or later. For sure. And there, boom, you got a client. That's because the more honest you can be on that, why people, like, don't tell them what they want to hear. Tell them what they need to hear. Yes. I just feel like some people are always just, you know, being that real estate agent and say, oh, it's always a good time to buy. Date the rate and whatever, Date blah, 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 rate. which I hate that one. But <laughs> I just feel like everyone's still trying to tell them what they think they need to hear rather than what they actually need to hear. 
Well, I mean, and I'm not saying this is the case for everybody, but commission breath is a real thing. For sure. You know, it really, really, really is. And it really will turn even the nicest person into somebody who cares more about themselves than their client. And at the end of the day, if you want to succeed in this business, correct me if I'm wrong, you need to care about your clients more than your paycheck. Yes. 100%. And a lot of people are not willing to do that. Well, I, I don't know if it's willing. I just feel like they have a hard time. They do. Yeah. I mean, they, in their mind, they want to, but then it's hard to. Once exactly. It down to when they have to put food on the table. Or whatnot, so. Exactly. And, you know, one thing that you're good at is really providing that value and making sure that people understand what you're trying to convey to them what, with whatever the video is. And you're not selling them. I'm like the worst salesman in the world. So I, that's <laughs> why I think I do well on YouTube, just because I will just tell you what I think. And, you know, if it's good or bad for me, the people that like, like me will reach out to me. The people that don't like me, are, we're not a good fit anyway. Well, so. that's the brilliant part. You figured out how to do a business, a business that is 100% sales, but not having to sell them. Yeah. Because they're reaching out to you. They want to work with you. And all you're doing is then, you know, I mean, I mean, you still have to negotiate and do all the, you have to do everything that has, that has to do with being involved with a real estate agent. But let's be real. That stuff is easy. Yes. The hardest part about this business is getting leads, For getting sure. clients. And you guys have figured out how to do that while you're sleeping. Yes. And I'm like the most stubborn person in the world. I'll like keep doing it until I figure out how to get it right. 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 So I, like I said, I did it for two years without, I got one closing from it in two years. I'm like, huh. Most people would probably stop doing this. And I'm like, nope. Keep going. Find a different way. Keep tweak going. something else and try to change it. And that's what I did. And now look at you. That's amazing. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. No, it's 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 really incredible. You you guys have figured out how to provide a really great living for your families by building content that can be watched 24 seven. Yeah, that's all day amazing. long. Amazing. Even if I miss a week of making a video, someone's still watching my other videos. You're so. still prospecting. You're yeah. still getting all those hours of views. And I think that that is the secret sauce to success in the future is are you prospecting overnight? Yeah. And now I'm also one last thing before I have to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. So now I'm making, I'll make a video. Now I have someone make a blog post about it. So now I'm trying to rank for SEO on oh. written word and for video. So I'm just trying to cover because not everybody likes to watch videos. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm trying to also do that. Now, those are starting to rank for video uh, for uh, SEO on Google as well. So. That's that, that that's another conversation. That's really interesting. Yeah. Well, dude, I want to thank you so much for coming. I know sure. you're super busy, and thank you so much for providing so much value to the listeners and honestly to me. Yeah. Anytime, dude. I really appreciate it. And I'm gonna have uh, one day. The goal would be to have you, Dan Parker, Austin, Jeremy, and Ian all on one call on a podcast so where you guys YouTube could just, would just explode. That happened. It would, I know it'd be, it'd be <laughs> epic though. Yeah. It'd be it'd great. Be I'm epic. hundred percent. I'm in count me in. Okay. Yeah. That'll be down the road, but uh, thanks for coming, man. I yeah, appreciate no it. No worries, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry about the cough. <laughs> so every time I was getting this thing. So what do you record this on? Is this on? Riverside. Dude, it's so great. So what is Riverside? I don't even know that one.